Hey y'all, this week we're going to do another woodworking project, but before we get started, I want to take just a moment to invite you to subscribe to our channel and like our videos. When you do this, it gives us an indication of the things you like, and it also keeps us motivated to keep going with putting out new content each week and hopefully improving our videos as we go along. We're just kind of beginners now, but we're trying to, to get better at it as time goes on. So please like and subscribe if you like these videos and that way you won't miss anything when we put out something new. Now today's project is um, going to be a box, a wooden box made out of picket fence panels and you can see it right here. Um, I will be perfectly honest with you though, I didn't make this one. Um, I asked my husband to make this one for me. I found, um, something kind of similar on Pinterest and I asked him to make it for me and he says that the most dreaded words that ever come out of my mouth are I've been thinking because he says that when I say I've been thinking it's going to cost him some time and maybe money and probably some hard work but he was very gracious about it and he did it for me but this time I want to see if I can make one myself. I am going to make a couple of modifications where he has drilled or jigsawed out for the handle. I'm just going to cut my pieces to go inside and just screw them in there. I think that step will be a little bit easier because he made this one to kind of hold a weight if it needed to and I don't need mine for anything super heavy because I'm just going to do things like put little jars in there. Um, it holds a regular size mason jar perfectly. It holds jar candles perfectly. So there's a lot of ways that I'm going to use my box for decorative purposes, but I hope to be able to make one for you today and I'll be giving you all the exact dimensions and step-by-step -step instructions on how to put it together. So stick around and I'll be back in just a few minutes to show you how to make this cool wooden box out of wooden fence uh, picket fence panels. Okay, so here we are out at um, my husband's building. Uh, I've got the saw and everything pulled out. And here is, again, the box that we're making out of the picket fence panels. So the first thing we're going to do is cut the lengths of the boards. And like I said, I will be sure and include the exact dimensions. So let's get started. Okay, so our first cut is going to be 14 inches from the tip of the um the tip of the uh, picket down the board so let's mark that at 14 and i'm gonna go ahead and mark the other one before we cut let me measure twice measure twice and cut once isn't that what they always say so 14 inches and let me grab this other board and we're gonna do this one same length because this is gonna be the ends of the box that we're making so 14 inches there too all right just gonna lay the tape measure aside and we'll be ready to make our cut I, I think I need to probably make the the line all the way let's see I should have found a I'll use this other board for my straight edge And same thing with the other one. I don't know if y'all can hear the chickens in the background, but they are going crazy. They are not enjoying this project, I don't think. And that's all right. There, there's some mean little things. They will peck you to death. But they do produce a whole lot of eggs. And they're not even my chickens. They're my daughter's chickens. So, anyway. So we're going to go ahead and make that first cut now. Make sure I got the blade lined up right. And here we go. Sorry that that's so noisy. Lay that aside. We're going to do side two. As you can tell, I am not an expert, but I do like to do projects like this. I think y'all have heard me talk about 
power tools and how they make me feel empowered. So we've got the ends for the um, box cut now. You can see these are kind of old and weathered. That's what we want. We want them. I probably should have cleaned these up a little bit first, but the old and weathered look, I love it. If you're starting out with new boards, you can recreate that weathered look just by taking some uh, chalk paint or just a light coat of paint and then roughing it up with a sander. If you need some tips on how to do this, if you have not already checked out my chalk painting course, I will link that in the description box and you can go in and take that for free too. So the next step is going to be to make the bottom and we'll be back in just a second to do that. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to cut the bottom and the sides. The bottom is going to be 18 inches long, so I'll go ahead and make my measurement there. And then I'm going to make a straight edge using this other board. A ruler would work just fine too, but I don't have one out here, so another board is going to work good. So... I'm going to measure this again, 18 inches, spot on, so we'll go ahead and make that cut. Again, I apologize for the noise of the saw. So that's our bottom. Now we're going to make um, the sides. Now before we get started with that, I'm just going to cut off, there's a bad piece here at the bottom. It's got some, I don't mind nail holes, but these are really big and kind of boogered up. So we're going to cut those off. Let me just kind of use a straight edge down here too to make that cut. And then after that, we're just going to measure 19 and a half inches. If I can find my tape measure. So, here we go. 19 and a half. And I'm going to use this little short piece that we cut for the bottom as my straight edge for that. I'm going to measure it again just to be safe. Oh, I was a little bit off, so I need to be just a little south of that line. All right, we can do this though. And then we need another one that's also 19 and a half. So this end looks better. See, this one is just a little bit, it's, it's rugged and I just like this smooth side better. So 19 and a half inches again. hope you can see I'm, I'm still struggling with the ca camera angles like I said at the beginning this is still pretty new to me hopefully the more practice I get the better content we can put out for you so that's spot on 19 and a half let's cut this baby just always get your saw blade lined up with the line <laughs> And you're good. So now we have our bottom and sides done. We'll be back in just a second to put it all together. Before we put it all together, I did want to mention that um, I did hit it just a little with the sander just because these are some old um, dirty kind of boards. This, this, this weathering is natural. So I sanded just the ends to get off the rough edges, but also I, I sanded the entire pieces just to, um, 
like I said, get off some of the dirt and mildew and that type thing. But uh, I didn't figure that you probably wanted to hear the noise of the sander. So I did that and now, now we'll put it all together. All right, our next step is going to be to use a little bit of this tight bond wood glue. We're going to do that to glue the sides to the bottom, but we're also going to secure it with some nails. Now, this stuff comes out really quick, so go really easy. Um, you can use any kind of wood glue that you want. This is just what I happen to have on hand. So I'm just going to take and just do a line of the glue down the uh, end of that board and just push it into the the end of that one just make sure you've got it pretty flush against there and just hold it there for a second and then you can pop it with the nail gun now you want to make sure that um, your nails are going in straight because this is a, a, a pretty long nail and you don't want it showing through the end of your box make sure it didn't well it did a little bit on the bottom but the bottom you can always hammer those in a little bit better at some point hammer them down I mean so then you're going to want to do the same thing with your, the other end of your box just take and uh Run your glue down the, the bare end right there, and then just set it up straight. And like I said, that glue comes out real easy, so and it's kind of thin. So, well, actually, I meant to do it on that side. And just kind of hold that for a second. Um, hold it for a second to... To get it to get it kind of stuck and then uh, then you can use your nail gun and I'm going to try to do that a little straighter this time because it did show a little bit on the bottom okay so we have this step all done we're ready to move on to the sides and that's going to stabilize it a little bit more so, I'll be back in just a minute to do that part. Alright, now we're going to do the sides. And I think this part's going to be a little bit easier just because we can lay it down flat like this. So, I'm going to take just a little bit of glue on each side of this before we shoot it with the nail gun. Just because it just holds it together a little bit better. Um... I don't think we would necessarily just have to use the glue, but just to make it a little bit more stable, a little bit more secure, we will do that. And then just get it lined up the best you can. Hold it there for a minute, and then just hit it with a nail gun about three times, I think, on each side. Don't worry about these holes. That's part of its charm. It just makes it just um, nice and rustic looking. And I mean, that's I love that look. Hope you do too. So now we're just going to flip it and do the exact same thing on the other side. Just take your glue, run down those very ends of the ticket. Hold it down for just a minute. Getting it lined up really good. Another reason I sanded these is because I had used a, an ink pen for my markings. And I see just a couple of places that I still have ink marks. So I'm going to go back with the sander once this is all together and make sure that there's no ink marks still showing. But just pop this thing with the nail gun three times again on each end. Thank you. 
it's been a while since I've used one of these to amount to anything. I used one a lot when we were building our house and I had to uh, learn to use the saw and the nail gun. I love these things. Um, this is a bow stitch, but used the nail gun a lot to hang the pine tongue and groove paneling all through our house. But that's it. Our box is all together except for the handle. So I'll be back in just a minute to show you how we do that. Now, while I was off camera, I went ahead and cut this little piece of wood at 18 inches. Now, um, you can use a dowel rod for this, especially if you're using new fence pickets, a dowel rod is going to match that a lot better. Now, if you wanted this to match the, the weathered look, of course, you can paint and sand that too. I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave mine just the bare wood because I like that rustic look, just like this came out of somebody's old uh, tool shed or something like that. Now, like I told you before, for the box that my husband made, he did go through the ends and use the jigsaw to um, cut out where the, the um, handle would go all the way through and that would hold a heavier load if you were going to use it to carry something or, or hold something heavy but for the purposes of my little decorative box I honestly I'm taking the easy way out I didn't want to go to the trouble of having to cut those um, holes out my jigsaw skills are just eh, they're okay. Don't mind using a jigsaw, but if it's got to be a pretty job, I'm probably not your girl. So we're just going to drop down about an inch and a half on each side of this and just nail these on there. So I'll be back in just a second. One thing I forgot to mention is that if you do use a dowel rod, a circular saw would be another option for, for cutting your, um, circles your holes out of the board for the handle if you choose to do it that way um i don't think i've ever used a circular saw before um but i don't have one handy right now and i had already decided to just um nail the the handles on so anyway just giving you some options there you do it any way you want to again i'm taking the easy way out and so hang on just one second and i'll get that done Alright, so like I was saying before, I've dropped down about an inch and a half on each side of this and I've already got the handle kind of, um, it's not secured yet, but it's kind of in there so that we can um, pop it with the nail gun and if you do that, you're probably um, going to want to lean it to you just a little bit while you shoot it and that's just going to make it a little bit easier to get the nails in without running them through somewhere. So I'm just going to adjust the camera angle so that you can see. And we're just going to pop this thing with the nail gun. It takes me a minute to get it lined up, but hey, you take all the time you need. I'm going to pop it twice because we want to make sure it's pretty secure. it around and make sure it's lined up right. And there you go. There's your box. It is, it is not perfect, but it is done. And all that's left to do is just put all your cute little decorative things in there. Like I said, it'll hold mason jars. It'll hold lots of different things. Flowers, um, any kind of cute spring and summery pieces, even things for seasonal decorations, Christmas, Thanksgiving, fall, whatever you choose. So, pardon the um, noise in the background. That's the air compressor kicking on. But I just want to invite you to go in and read the blog post for how we made this box. And it'll, again, have all the dimensions in there and everything. 
and thank you for watching i hope you'll subscribe and hit like and i will see you next time